Hello and welcome back to the channel for a very special College TF review. Today we'll be taking a look at Stupid Ninja's G1 LEGO Optimus Prime. And this guy, I, this is probably one of the best YouTube finds that I've ever encountered. Um, Stupid Ninja did a fantastic job engineering this Prime. And please be sure to check out the links in the description below to get free building instructions for how to build this guy. That's right, free building instructions. Stupid Ninja uh, was very generous in providing how he built this Prime and walks you through step-by-step step how to build it. And I can tell you firsthand after building it myself, um, his instructions are flawless and lead to a fantastic result. He also did a video just as a review of his Optimus Prime. So also be sure to check that out in the description below. Big shout out to Stupid Ninja. Thank you so much for allowing me to review your fantastic mock. I really appreciate it. Um, I, I just, I really appreciate your channel too. I think what you build is fantastic and I love your contributions to the LEGO and Transformers community alike. So with that being said, let's get straight into this review. So I also have made a whole bunch, a few modifications to the figure itself. And then of course, I've added a lot of accessories um, to this Prime. And if you want to see some build videos, me do some build videos of either um, the Prime himself or of course, all these accessories I built, I'd be happy to do that. Just let me know down in the comments below. So just getting straight into Prime himself here. Let's just have a look at him. So his, this is a very well done model. I have made a few modifications to the head sculpt um, from the original, but definitely very nice. And the beauty of Lego, just build with what you have on hand. Uh, and that's exactly what I did. So the majority of the modifications I made to Super Ninja's design are just based on what parts I have available. So here you can see the head sculpt, which is some nice classic blue and light bluish gray parts. Take off his gun for now. We'll get into the accessories in a moment here. Don't fall over Prime. Ah, losing the Iron Bluster. He is still Lego, so not without his disintegration problems, but it's a Lego, so put it back together. You can see, very nicely done. I love the just the way Stupid Ninja is able to incorporate all of these different paint applications that are well, using these different elements that rep, are reminiscent of the original G1 toy. Got the yellow there on the bumper. Um, a suggestion in the video, he didn't build it this way, but a suggestion during the video was to um, add in some yellow one by one tiles just to be, to give the hint of like the arrows on Optimus's arms from the cartoon. And I did mine as Stupid Ninja suggested in the cartoon paint scheme, so using the white um, for the bumpers and thighs instead of silver or gray. Silver is very hard to come by with Lego. I also changed out the um, overall look of the front here just because I didn't have enough 1x2 cheese wedges to fill that space. So, of course, Lego is what you, what you want it to be. And then I did also change out the foot design to be a little bit more simple and a little more stable from that of Stupid Ninja's design. And again, if you want me to see, if you want to see me um, build this guy and walk you through step by step how to make either the modifications or add in the accessories, please be sure to let me down know down in the comments below. Yeah, his details are very nice. And the fact that this guy does transform just like any other transformer, no parts forming, is pretty amazing. You can see the back, a little bit of hollowness there, but cleans up very well for a Lego Transformer, for sure. This guy was a ton of fun to build. I did spend quite a while rummaging through my parts to try and find all the parts I needed to build this guy, but it was totally worth it and a ton of fun. Who doesn't love building with Lego? And this guy also has fantastic articulation, far surpasses that of the Lego, the official Lego set, which I did review, and we'll bring in here later for comparison. Please be sure to check out that video as I do also. I love that the official Lego set is, is fantastic, but I think as an overall, um, you know, best Lego Prime, this is the best one I've encountered thus far, for sure. So into articulation here, he is very well articulated. So at the head, we do get can swivel, full 360, and then look up and down, depending on how you maneuver the transformation joint, you can get them looking all sorts of angles. So very nicely done there. 
we do get full 360 rotation unhindered at the shoulder. Um, now the way this is built, you can't really hinge it forward. You can sort of use it. Um, part of the transformation joint there, it does, it is a little bit tricky, but you can get a full butterfly joint if you want to, um, and a dub double butterfly joint basically backwards. Um, it's just a little tricky to use all those joints because it's just one by ones holding it all together. So, but that is definitely there, um, especially because this guy is definitely more of a model to pose. It's a little bit hard to play with definitely, but still got the playability factor for sure. Then we do get a ball joint here at the elbow. So a nice swivel there, and then you can hinge here, and then it's actually double jointed. I, I was very impressed with how Super Ninja designed this to have double joints. So you can get them, of course, bending to the full 90 degrees there, largely due to transformation purposes, but then it does extend out basically for robot mode. So very nice. And then um, I did modify the hand design on mine, and you know, it's Lego, so there's tons of different ways to do the hands, and it's just based on what parts you have around, and these were the colors that I had of these parts. So I just did that, um, and it is just a inward rotation there for the hands, um, but you could of course change that on yours. Um, now due to transformation, you could, if you untab this section here, um, geez, not, there it goes, you can get a waist swivel, sort of, but it does cause things to fall off, like there goes a wheel. So I wouldn't recommend doing that. And he looks fantastic as it is. So I don't think there is a real need for waist articulation, especially cause it would probably further compromise the integrity of the build. For leg articulation, um, he, does, he can't kick out that far because of how these parts all fold up. But I think for transformation purposes, the fact that this guy can transform, um, I'm not too concerned about that, especially because the Lego ball joints are only so strong. So, and this guy is fairly hefty, fairly dense. So not a big issue. Then there is ball joint here, so you can get the full, I guess, lower leg rotation, um, just like the Lego. And then you can kick forward to just about the bumper. I mean, if you hinge it out of the way, you can get him kicking all the way out like that. And then the same thing true and back. You can kick him, get him, kick him, getting him kicking, geez, speak right, all the way back like that. And then again, really nice job here by Super Ninja incorporating a double joint into the knee. So he can hinge this all the way back. He can kick himself in the butt. Fantastic. Very nice articulation there. Very well engineered. And overall, this guy is fairly solid. One of the most solid um, Transformers figure, Lego Transformers figures I've seen on the internet, um, and especially for one that is about Voyager scaled. So very nice, or minifig scaled, however you want to interpret. And then I did give him a ball joint at the foot, so this has the full range of articulation uh, for posability. So there is articulation. Before we get into accessories, let's just do some size comparisons since I have them here. Sit back down frame, or stand up, I suppose. Get them straight. There we go. Let's start with, of course, G1 Prime for comparison. There's G1 Prime. Here is Earthrise Prime. And there is Lego Prime, official Lego Prime. So there's how he stacks up amongst all the different primes. So as you can see, he is about Voyager, leader, whatever you want to call it, scaled. He's about in the chug range, but a little bit taller. Once we get him in truck mode, he is almost a perfect one-to-one -one match for Voyager, Optimus Primes, and the original. But so yeah, I would say he's about Voyager scaled. And here is Minifig, my version of Spark Plug here. So I think he definitely works for minifigs, for sure. So that is for comparisons. This to the side. And G2. Now for accessories. As you can see, the biggest one is sitting behind him, but we'll get to that later. We'll start off with his Ion Blaster. And this one I built um, I, I used some inspiration, of course, from Stupid Ninja's designs, but I mainly just built off 
based on the G1 designs. So this is my version of the blaster using, you know, what parts I have available and to incorporate into my hand design. So of course, to incorporate it into Optimus, you just have two studs here and it does just attach into his hand like so. Have him wielding his ion blaster. I think it definitely looks very nice. I tried to actually, I on purpose designed it to have the trigger in the wrong location and I'm holding the, um, hold, essentially holding the cartridge just because I think that's funny and I like that on the original toy. So I did, took that liberty on mine. Then I did also build uh, my version of an Energon X based on the parts I have available. Unfortunately, this part is red and that one's red just because I didn't have enough orange, but this is the orange I had and this is what I built. To integrate it into Optimus, just detach his hand here. So not at the clip, just the actual hand itself. Then rotate both of these clips inside and then just attach. This has two studs on it in the base there and it just attaches to the base of those clips. So fairly easy to attach with minor disintegration. <laughs> And he can be wielding his Energon Axe as well. And you can get him in, as you could see in the intro, to pretty dynamic poses with ease. Um, with all the ball joints and stuff. Just gotta make sure he doesn't want to fall over. So there we go. All posed up pretty quickly. And then, of course, there are a lot more accessories here. Um, but we'll get more into those once we get them into uh, truck mode just because they're more applicable in that mode. So detach his axe, get his hand back on. Can't really leave his axe on for transformation. <laughs> so attach that back there. And detach his gun again. Hopefully it does not fall apart on me. And the hand came off, but that's fine. Okay, so for transformation, so what we want to start out is it's definitely definitely tricky because you know being Lego, he will definitely fall apart on me. Um, but this is definitely an amazingly done design. So to start out, we'll start with the legs, I guess, because that's the easiest. Just by rotating the feet, like so, just rotate them around. Um, I greatly simplified this from Stupid Ninja's design as his design was very well done, but I just don't have those particular parts on hand and I wanted something a little bit simpler given how complex everything else already is on this guy. And then you just want to rotate the thighs around like so. And we do want to hinge out these pieces from inside. So you can see these just hinge out like that. Do the same thing on this side hinge these pieces out and then we do there's just one stud here that goes into the Technic port on that side and just clamp it all together and then what I did on mine since I built a trailer and wanted greater stability I added some 1x2 plates here and I used this round 2x2 two two with a hold hole in the center as a trailer hitch and you'll see it integrate later but I just use this to then attach over top of the legs and it does just then fully solidify the legs. Makes it much easier to deal with for transformation. For the arms, we wanna go ahead and start working on those just to make it simple. Just wanna bend them to 90, fold the wrists in, and then take this back piece here and rotate it around. So it's all on one by one, so I'd recommend holding the arm and just rotate this piece around 90 degrees. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. So rotate this inside, then rotate the arm 90 degrees, trying to keep all this whole elbow assembly in place at the same time. Make sure that's, there we go, 90 degrees, and then rotate this like that. So we should be left with something like this where the arm is kind of just flush against the side on both sides. Then we want to 
go ahead and make sure these wheels are out of the way before we detach everything. So just rotate them down, sorry, rotate them down and around here. I did also modify how these are attached because on the original design, they do um, rub against the bottom of the truck. And so I just added a few, I just added, literally just added a one by one in there to raise the height. And then I did adjust the placement of the thighs. Again, if you want to see what I did specifically, please let me know down in the comments and I could work on a video going over my modifications to Stupid Ninja's design. Then next, let's go ahead and rotate, oops, there goes part of the arm, rotate the antenna down here on the head. So we will need those collapsed. Let's attach this back on. And then we want to disengage this waist joint here. And it is just a ball joint that all this is situated on. I just want to rotate all this around and then rotate here at the thighs like that. And then, so you should be left with something that looks kind of like this. And then we do want to make sure the wheels are situated back. Kind of, for now, kind of pressed up against the thigh here. And then we want to hinge out these red pieces on the torso out of the way, like this. So they now are in the front. And then there is two studs here that attach to the back of the bumper. And that all locks into place like that. So now we can have a very solid truck mode to work with to finish transformation. So next we want to stow the head away. So to do that, oh, there is one other major feature I forgot to showcase again in robot mode. That being, of course, the matrix chamber. He does have a matrix of leadership. You can open up the windows here and there is a matrix in there. You can just pull it out. We'll pull it out for now because it'll probably fall out anyways during transformation. So there's the matrix. I did not really design it so that he can hold it, but this is a stupid ninja's design, and I think it looks very nice for the part. Definitely does the trick. So sorry about that, forgot to showcase that in robot mode, but that is also there. I mean, this guy is just packed full of awesome accessories. So to get the head to where we want it, this is the trickiest part of the transformation. Um, so open up that chamber again, and then we actually want to push I'm just using this as a piece, as a as an aid to help me push this piece. But there is this Technic piece in here, and we want to push that through by one plate, essentially. Let's push it back. So it just slides the head back by one. And it is slightly falling apart on me here, so bear with me. Now the whole thing did just pop out. But that's okay. It's Lego. Pop it back together. There we go. Everything reattached as it should be. So now this whole headpiece is slid back by one. There goes the matrix. I'll leave that off for now. The whole head is slid back by one piece now. And we can now rotate everything around. So we actually need to rotate all of this forward. It is on a double joint. I'll just take it off so you can see. So one thing real quick, I did just partially dissect them so you can see this in closer detail because I did unfortunately mess this up when I was trying to showcase it. So the head rotation, it should actually line up like this because you want to be able to be able to shift this piece back underneath um, a piece that's on the roof here, this roof section. So this will shift through this piece like it already is and then through this and it'll help solidify the truck mode. And then you wanna make sure the head is facing this direction. Um, and this will all help everything line up much smoother than what I was trying to do. So just to show that, now attach this back here, and then it does shift forward much nicer. And then the whole arm section should line up very smoothly. And then to show what I meant about trying to get these this whole window section lined up, you want to just, these clips are separate from the one by one from the rotation of the shoulder joint here. So you just want to rotate at the clips. Once you do finally get everything 
maneuver it into place, you should be left with something like this. And this is another great bit of engineering here from Stupid Ninja. So these pieces do then just collapse inside like that. And it does help further fully solidify the truck mode. Now this final step here is certainly a little bit difficult the way the pieces are attached, but you do just wanna kind of wiggle these so that you shift the bar all the way inside. So I just get in there with my fingernails and slide it in like that. So you can see it slid in on this side and this one's not yet slid in. So do the same thing on the other side. Just want to slide it inside without breaking it, of course. <laughs> always the intent. There we go. Shifted inside. And then the way all this is cut out, it's designed to just flip over the head. Whoopsies. Just flips over the base and covers up the back like that. Very nicely. Very, very nicely. And here's Prime actually finally transformed into his truck mode. Sorry if that was not the smoothest process, but it is a Lego Transformer and thus does have its complications. But I think this is very, very well done on the part of Stupid Ninja. I think this is a fantastic Prime design. I mean, it looks just like the G1 truck. Really, really, really nice. For sure. And it does do the rolling. Rolling is certainly Good. Just make sure these are shifted forward. Now we do get the rolling. Very smooth as Lego, so rolls very, very well. And so again, my design is slightly different from that of Stupid Ninja's original design, um, just because I modified um, the way he kind of sits on the ground so that the front wheels do actually roll properly. And then I did modify the feet so they are disguised a little bit cleaner. For some comparisons in truck mode here, of course, we'll bring in G1 Prime. We'll start with just the truck himself, but then we'll also use the trailer later. So here is size comparison there with G1 Prime. Let's move this out of the way so we can get a better look. All the size comparisons, here we go. There's G1 Prime. And here is Bumblebee Movie Prime. So here you can see just the scaling of the three. He's definitely closer to the Voyager scale. Setting it off to the side. Just rotate these two around. Get a head-on look too. There's that and that. So definitely closest to that Voyager size, a little bit bigger. Put them in a liter price liter size scale. So that for comparisons, we will come back in for the full G1 comparison in a bit here. So just bring them in for the detailing. Again, much the same that we get in, ro in robot mode. Um, and I think it's really nice design the way all like this, the, the build is really, really awesome. The way he engineered this is uh, honestly blows my mind. Very well done. Cleans up very, very well. I mean, if you just saw this, you would just think it's a Lego mock of a, of a G1 inspired Optimus Prime truck. Not that it actually can transform like an actual transformer toy. So there you go. Here is, that is Optimus Prime in his truck mode. So I did not build it to have any kind of weapons integration into a struck mode, but I mean, it's Lego. There's a million possibilities, so you can do whatever you want. So now bringing in the trailer to look at that. So this is it, of course, all expanded for robot mode. Oh, there goes the drone. So this is my own mock that I designed to go with Stupid Ninja's design for Optimus. Yeah, the drone there on the top. So I'll just collapse it down so you can get a better look at it. So it does, of course, have the jack stands on this side. So those just fold out and hinge down. 
And then I did add a few extra jacks in here to both solidify the connection in uh, when it's when it's in full trailer form, and then provide extra support for when it's down, so it doesn't have to rely on just these outriggers. So this trailer, just gonna rotate it around here. It is definitely quite large. I like to build the trailer be very large, similar to that of the original. So here, just bring it in a little bit closer so you can see that repair drone. Here's the repair drone. I decided to give mine arms in the front in addition to the main arm. This uses some very old articulated claw pieces there. That is the droid arm, the little droid. And then it does collapse down inside like that. And then you just fold the antenna down like so. And then the trail I did also, of course, build a roller. Here's roller. And he does have a, this part flips up so you can tow the trailer. I'll show in a second here, but you can store him inside. There is a ramp here, a bit hard to see the ramp, and you can just go inside. So, angle the camera down, better view. There we go. You can see them all stored in there. And so, for a quick comparison here, pull out the G1 trailer. Just for comparison, there are some design limitations I faced when building the trailer in order to make it very strong so it doesn't actually quite fold all the way out. Um, but yeah, you know, this it's Lego. Build it however you want. So here is, of course, G1 roller for a comparison with Lego roller. So about the same. Mine's definitely a little narrower, just so it can fit in the trailer. And then there's, of course, G1 drone compared to the Lego drone. Follow this back up. Now the trailer, to fold up the trailer, you can keep a roller in there, of course, there's plenty of space. So if you want to keep a roller in there, just put them there, fold down the ramp, and then all this just closes up and close the doors that and then fold in fold up the ends out riggers and then you do need to collapse these parts in first as they do rest inside that rigger in order to keep it kind of locked in place for truck mode. so there is the trailer fully collapsed and just for a comparison here is the g1 trailer for a sense of size so i definitely built mine to be a lot bigger but that's consistent with the prime scaling difference. So there's difference with the trailers. And here's just a comparison of that striping. This was definitely the hardest part when building the trailer was how to get that transition there. And I mean, it's still got its gaps, but I'm pretty happy with it overall. It looks pretty good to the original. Then to attach prime, again, I just added this little trailer hitch piece. And then underneath, there's this little frictionless peg. Now it just attaches right in there, prime. And he can tow his gigantic trailer around with a roller and everything. Drives very smooth, and it is Lego. I think it definitely looks pretty awesome there. I am very happy with how that turned out. This up, there we go. And for comparison with the original G1 Prime with trailer, there's that comparison. So just a little bit bigger, like it's just a little bit bigger. And then if you want roller to tow it, you of course can have roller tow the trailer. Detach Prime, pull out roller, flip up 
that little piece here. And then it attaches the same way as Optimus did. Trailer just snaps right in to that frictionless peg and roller can tow the trailer as well. And then roller can also wield the gun using that same point of attachment. So on the gun here, just detach the handle and it'll reveal that peg. And then you can just attach the gun to the top of the roller there. And it disintegrates, of course. And roller can drive around with Optimus's blaster. Like that. Optimus will be attached here. So that about does it. So then I guess for one final comparison, here is minifigure. I think it's definitely close enough to be minifigure scale. In terms of playability, you definitely can get that out of this. Um, I think it'd be a fantastic Lego set for sure. And you can, of course, get spark plug seated on the roller here. Neither the front or back space for many figs. So you can drive around with the roller. Yeah, and that I think about does it for my review of Stupid Ninja's Optimus Prime plus the accessories I built for him. Um, this was definitely a longer video. Uh, thank you for sticking around. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like my videos, please be sure to subscribe and like the channel and definitely be sure to check out Stupid Ninja's videos and build one of these primes for yourself. So thank you so much for watching and catch you at the next video.